Hello and welcome to this Accountancy Age video in association with Silverfin. I'm Tom Lemon, reporter for Accountancy Age, and in this video, we're analysing the results of the Accountancy Age 50 plus 50 rankings from 2020. Despite 2020 being a truly unprecedented year, thanks to the coronavirus pandemic, accountancy firms breached the 17 billion pound barrier in fee income last year, almost 8% of growth from 2019. However, around a third of firms are expecting revenue growth to be lower than in this year ahead. So perhaps we can say there is a sense of cautious optimism amongst accountants as we get stuck into 2021. With me to discuss the results of the rankings in further detail are two great guests. First, we have Fraser Campbell, partner and UK head of accounts and business advisory services at Azex, who find themselves in the top 10 for the first time this year. Fraser leads Azex accounting, tax compliance and business advisory teams across the UK. He is also responsible for the audit of large groups of companies and international clients, as well as advising a diverse range of owner managed businesses. And joining him, we have Joris van der Goog, co-founder and co-CEO of Silverfin. Joris describes himself as a former accountant frustrated with number crunching, who is now a happy technologist building the leading compliance and advisory platform for the profession. So maybe Fraser, if I start with you, what, what do you think it says about the, the health of the accountancy profession that it's been able to breach the, the 17 billion pound revenue barrier for the first time in what is supposed to be the, the toughest of years in about 300 years, I believe. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? I mean, I think my view of, of the last year is um, we've had several factors that have um, compounded together to create an environment where our clients, and, and as you're aware, we deal with over 100,000 SME clients across the UK, um, they're going through a huge amount of change and that change, not just the, the impact of the pandemic, but also the rapid and accelerating technology changes that are taking place, we are finding that our clients are relying on us more and more to help them navigate um, that change environment. And the pandemic just accelerated the reliance that they have. So we've been extremely busy giving that support and advice to our clients to help them navigate those two channels that they, they, they find themselves in. Both, both the technology change, the landscape, and 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 the pandemic, of course. And, and yeah. maybe from our side, because uh, it's it's I fully agree, and uh, we have been hosting over the past year uh, leadership breakfast, and we have spoken with 150 firms about these topics, and maybe a third element that we have seen like quite commonly across the UK is uh, the more and more complex legislations that have uh, lead to more uh, demands, questions towards accountants as well. So I would agree very much on the, the COVID pandemic, the combination with uh, the impact of technology, the good impact of technology in our opinion, but the third element, and that's maybe even a global trend, more and more complex legislation. Yeah, I think I think yours. That's a really good point, and you know that we, we've been dealing with that for for some time over the last last two or three years, as particularly HMRC um, is is turning up the heat on on particularly the smaller end of the the, the business, you know, SME market, and um, to become more uh, to become compliant under making tax digital, uh, and and again, that's an area where our clients are relying us to make sure we keep them the right line of the, re the right side of the line of the regulations, which by and large is is a technology play. Um, and again, they, they are relying on, on, on their accountants to, to, to help them navigate that and, and make sure they are compliant with the, the regulations as they come into force. And if we look at the, the year ahead and, and the, rest, the rest of 2021, 20, we're now in January, of course. Um, but, you know, we had a few months ago, this, this optimism around a vaccine and, and that 2021 could actually be quite a, a good year. Um, obviously now in the UK, we're, we're in a third national lockdown or, or pretty much third national lockdown. So I was wondering, how do you think a vaccine changes strategies for, for accountancy firms? Um, Yoris, if I start with you. Well, what, so first of all, maybe what we've seen and what we've heard uh, last year, and I think that will be the same for this year, maybe, eh, um, 
hopefully when the lockdowns are over, when the vaccine is there. But what we've seen last year is that there are way much more touch points with the clients. It's much easier to jump on a Zoom, jump on a team call. And therefore, the outcome is that uh, the accountants are becoming even more closer trusted advisor. And so my opinion, or at least our opinion as a company, Silverfin, is that in 2021, when the lockdown is over, when the new world uh, is, is finally there. I think that that, that will continue. Uh, uh, technology is there to facilitate, but more than ever, it's an opportunity to be much closer with the client, way more touch points, uh, no longer once a year just discussing stat accounts, but really helping, guiding, and advising the clients. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good point. And, and you know, when, when lockdown, the first lockdown came, um, within a matter of less than a week, we had to transition our... Um, over three and a half thousand staff from, from, from working within offices to working at home. We were able to do it within that time frame without, you know, there were some hiccups, but we got there relatively quickly. And I've been um, really encouraged about the way in which our teams have been able to um, work actually probably closer than they ever have with their clients over the past year using platforms such as Zoom and, and, and the other digital technologies available to us. I think the specific question about a vaccine, that gives us a road out of this, uh, of, of this situation we're in and will hopefully allow the economy start to come back um, come back to life and hopefully more rapid than, than, than is predicted. Um, and, but I think the technology um, enablers that we have and those behaviours are here to stay. And, and, and the, the, the changes which we probably anticipated in terms of how we interacted with our clients and, and, and delivered services to them over the next five years have probably you know, been condensed into this year and next year. We, we've transitioned far faster in the last year um, than, than, than we'd ever, ever expected. And clients are far more willing now to move their businesses onto technology platforms post-pandemic than, than, than maybe they were pre-pandemic. That inertia is starting to, to starting to break down as, as as businesses business owners see it's actually not that difficult after all because we've all had to do it throughout the pandemic. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of a sort of awakening, isn't there, to to the value of tech. Yeah. Um, I guess this this then links to my next question. I was I was going to ask, which is sort of, you know, looking at whether whether you think we will revert back to our old ways, or will we continue to embrace technology? Um, Fraser, what, what do you think? You, I get the sense that you think we're this is a paradigm shift. Yeah, yeah, I I, I genuinely think it is, um, and and a. I think will we revert to the old ways? I, I think we will get. Um, it depends what you define the old ways as being. Um, my view of the old ways is that you know we are always have been and will continue to be the trusted advisor to um, the SME business base in in the UK. That's not going to change. It's just technology has enabled the way in which we're able to do that. So that as as Joris is saying, that we can do it far more often far more touch points and with far more up-to-date information. One of the biggest challenges that we have with, with, with any business is ensuring that we're not always looking in the rear view mirror. Technology and cloud enabled technologies allow us to have an up-to-date view of the health of our clients' businesses. And the more clients that transition and accelerate to those types of platforms, the better quality of advice we're gonna be able to give to those clients and ultimately that, that enhances the, our overall economic well-being as a, as, as a society. So I, I'm an optimist, as you can tell from the way I'm talking. My view is that th these are positive changes, um, yep. and, and I think they're here to stay, and we'll have the best of the old ways and more of it, as far as I'm concerned, using the technology as, a, as an enabler. But what I think became crystal clear because of this pandemic is that exactly uh, technology is a partner, not a disruptor for our industry. Yes, we were already the trusted advisor, but technology will really leverage, in, leverage us to become even a way more close and active advisor, maybe even more proactive in that respect. And it's a transformation. We always try to say that it's not an overnight change. Uh, this pandemic has probably fastened that change, uh, but technology is here to help. Eh? The collaboration piece, which we have been addressing, not only via those uh, online meeting, 
platforms, but as well uh, using that data, collaborating with the client, one platform. Eh? So, so those type of things are really enablers, not really disruptors. And I think that really became crystal clear now. If, if I come to you, Fraser, when we look at specifically at the, at the tech side of things, what has a firm like as it's been able to do to, you know, you've had this success, you moved into the, into the top 10. Um, how much of that is down to technology and your, and your adoption of it? Um, so, so I think our, you know, it's, it's fair to say that our move into the top 10 has been a result of our, you know, the first phase of our existence, which was, as you know, a consolidation of a number of leading firms across across the UK. So, so that's created the scale that's brought us into the top 10. Um, alongside that journey, we have been transforming how we um, deliver our services and, and provide that advisory um, a insight and, and support to our SME client base. And technology is the, the, the backbone of how we are currently doing that and will continue to do that um, uh, going forward. Um, and and as, as, as we're saying before, it, it is the key enabler. Um, I, I think um, as, as, the, as, as the last year has, has shown that um, technology is to be embraced and, and where we are working with clients on um, rationalized platforms, on, on, on up to date and from uh, using up to date um, data about their businesses, we can get far better, greater quality insight, a far better conversations with our clients and give them the support and advice they need in order to prosper and thrive in a very challenging business environment just now. So, so it's a key pillar of our business that, that we're using the technology tools to um, continually enhance and improve the, the, the quality of advice and support we can give to our clients. And, and, and as I say, it's the, you know, it's, it doesn't replace people absolutely not. It is the enabler that allows, allows our amazing, fantastic advisors to, to give even better, more up-to-date quality advice to our clients. And, and, and it's, it's a key part of our, our strategy um, as, we, as we continue to, to grow. I very much agree. I think, uh, like you're saying, technology is that backbone. Eh? Yeah. If we talk about growth, if we talk about change in, uh, in the accounting industry, we always talk about three aspects. We talk about the people, eh, because we see that as the most important uh, element uh, in change, but as well, who will they be in the future, the skill set. Eh? So that's the most important uh, topic for us. Secondly, the technology. Eh, how can we support as a technology? And third, for us, eh, more like into the future, the impact of the business model, because something that will change by leveraging that technology is that business model. But that will only happen if we are right about what's the future skill set of an accountant, eh? how will they work, how will they collaborate, how can uh, technology help you, and then the third element, how will we change uh, that business model. So therefore, we keep on repeating, it's not an, uh, a disruption, it's not an overnight change, it's a transformation. Yeah. That's, that's, that is what is crucial. Absolutely. But but then Yoris, if we stay with you, looking at the looking at the rankings this year, do you think that that being an adopter and being open to this change of of technology and everything that we've had last year um, has that been the difference for a lot of firms between success and failure? Yeah, from our side, uh, obviously, yes. I would say obviously, yes, eh? but uh, I'm a technologist. But uh, what, what we see in, in, in the growth and even in the emerging firms, eh? so, so smaller firms that all of a sudden uh, become really dominant players, and we see that trend even globally, is that uh, there is always a strategic plan. Eh? That strategic plan then again thinks about those three pillars, people, technology, and the business model. Eh? So it's a combination of those three elements that leads to growth. Eh? Obviously, you have acquisition growth and restructuring growth, but we see that those type of firms that really start growing like actively, that have an active growth strategy, have a strategy about those three pillars. And it's the combination of that three pillars is crucial. Technology on its own will not do it because we need the people. People on its own will not do it. They have the technology. And the business model, something we've been discussing over the past decades even, will only change if we start with looking into what do, do we need to change? What's automation? How can we become data-driven? Like that takes time. And exactly then again, that combination of those three elements will be crucial for the growth of an accounting firm. Yeah, and Fraser, what, what's your take on that? 
I agree. Um, and, and, you know, the, the three legs of the stool, we talk about the three legs of the stool as well. We may, may, may call them different names. Um, but, but again, I, I reiterate what I said before, it's almost back to the future. Um, you know, we, we find that uh, we, our growth and success is based on the growth and success of our clients. The growth and success of our clients is, is enhanced in a virtuous circle by the advice our people are able to deliver them. And technology is a key enabler to deliver that advice, so uh, and, and has always been the case. Um, and and I, th I think what we found, particular, and, and it's very encouraging in the last year, that the 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 rate of adoption and willingness to adopt and the willingness to change has just become even more embedded in our culture. And um, there's no longer a need to, you know, we're, we're we're moving beyond the first adopters and you know and the laggards are now now there. You know, it's very much the inertia. To change that business model is, is is starting to break down within our business at, at pace now, and I see and I'm very optimistic about how that's going to help us accelerate the the, the the business model consolidation over the coming couple of years and really get the balance right between the personalization, the personal service that we give to our SME clients, and and the the, the amazing technologies that that that, that are underlying that. And, and they all work in balance. Getting them right all the time is not easy, but but yeah, you know, absolutely, I'm optimistic that we're we're accelerating that positive change over the over the coming years. Great, thank you. Um, well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. Thank you to Fraser and Yoris for your excellent insights, and and thank you for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date with the latest accountancy news, head to accountancyage.com. And if you'd like to hear more about how Silverfin can help you transform your services, head over to silverfin.com. But for now, it's goodbye from us. Goodbye. <laughs>